After an unusual year of isolation and uncertainty, it may not be surprising that experts who deal with eating disorders are seeing a surge in cases. Today, a discussion on seeking help and supporting those you love who are struggling. Joining us live via Skype is dietitian Diana Rice with more information on this. Hi, Diana. Hi, Heather. Well, what have you seen over the past year? Are you seeing an increase in those seeking help for eating disorders right now? Yes, I really am. I'm getting a lot more inquiries for eating disorder treatment than I was uh, a little over a year ago before we were in the pandemic. And what we have to remember is that eating disorders are a mental health condition. So conditions that the pandemic has brought on, like isolation, lack of structure, uncertainty, all of these have led to a perfect storm that has contributed to the rise in eating disorders. Yeah, that makes sense. And many of us developed some really bad eating habits during the pandemic. But what makes it rise to the level of an actual eating disorder? So one thing to keep in mind is that we can absolutely see disordered eating that is not officially an eating disorder, but that in and of itself is still something that you might want to seek treatment for, and a dietitian can help you with that. But what really characterizes an eating disorder is the level of obsession around food. So thoughts around food and exercise that are impairing your ability to work or focus on your studies. If you're doing things like declining social invitations because you don't want to be around food, and especially if food consumption or restriction is like a coping mechanism mechanism for you. Uh, these are all signs that you could be suffering from an eating disorder and you definitely want to talk to your doctor about it. Well, asking someone about changes in their body, say if you see them losing weight or their eating habits, that can feel intrusive on both sides. But is that the best way to help someone or how should we approach it? Well, yes and no. Um, this is the hardest part. People who are in the throes of an eating disorder will often go to great lengths to mask their behaviors. So if you approach someone in a, an accusatory way, there's a very good chance that that conversation is gonna go south and that person's not gonna get the help that they need. So it's really important to ask non-judgmental non questions, um, something like, I see you're spending a lot of time on X, or you know, how do you feel about you know, all the time you're spending doing this thing I see? Um, or you could just ask the person how they're doing. You know, are they struggling with anything? Can you help them find support? Keep it really open-ended and non-judgmental. Now, I will say, if you're the parent and you suspect that your child is the one suffering from an eating disorder, I would really recommend that you talk to that child's pediatrician and bring with you a list of the symptoms and behaviors that you're observing so that you and the pediatrician together can come up with a plan to get your child treatment they need. And ultimately maybe counseling. So after the pandemic, it seems counselors of every kind are just overbooked right now. So if experts in eating disorders are also not accepting new clients right now, then where should people turn for help? It's really tough. Uh, the first thing I would say is to work with your primary care physician. Treating eating disorders is a team approach, and the primary care physician is an important member of that team. So if you're having trouble finding appropriate support, make sure your PCP knows that so they can tap into their referral network for you. The next thing to know is that for the most part, um, dietitians and therapists are an integral part of the eating disorder treatment team as well. And these practitioners um, may have, are the ones who are more likely to have limited availability right now, but they're also the ones who are more likely to be able to provide their services via telehealth. So you may not be able to provide a, find a provider in you know, your local area, but you could still hopefully find someone elsewhere in the state of Oklahoma who can help you with telehealth services. I know that's the case for me. I'm located in Edmond and I have clients all over the city the state.